Welcome to the discussion about high reliability. My name is Holly McMillan and I am a quality manager at Ascension St. Thomas Midtown Campus. The Institute of Medicine reported in the late 90s that up to 98,000 medical related deaths occurred each year throughout the US. Since then, patient safety has become a core focus area across healthcare. How has a lack of reliability affected you? Think of a personal or professional circumstance where you were impacted by a lack of high reliability. I am going to ask you three questions. Remember how many answers you answered yes to. Question one, have you ever had an error occur while under medical care? Question two, do you know a friend or family member who has had an error occur while under medical care? And question three, have you or anyone you worked with ever made an error while caring for a patient? I am going to share a personal story that I have experienced related to a medical error. My grandfather had an appendectomy and recovered quickly and went home. He experienced severe abdominal pain a week later and was, remitted and was readmitted to the hospital. The abdominal x-ray revealed that there had been a sponge or gauze left in his abdomen during his initial surgery. He had to have an additional procedure and spent 10 days in the hospital. He eventually recovered, but it impacted his overall health and independence. This story is why we are here today focusing on high reliability. This session is all about high reliability. What does the word reliable mean to you? What word, images, people, or organizations come to mind? Think about that word reliability. Do some of these words represent what a patient or family may expect for their medical care? Words like consistency, dependability, trustworthy, safety, quality. High reliability is the foundation for both clinical and non-clinical associates to maximize safety and lead with quality. It includes patient, families, and associates. High reliability commits us to our quadruple aim of exceptional outcomes. This means helping each person achieve their personal health care goals. Affordable care. This means doing all we can to have the cost of staying healthy be reasonable. Exceptional experience for those we serve. This means caring for the entire experience and the person's needs of each individual, including their family members. Exceptional experience for providers. This means creating the best experience possible for all our associates. Let's look at some examples of the quadruple aim. Exceptional out exceptionable outcomes. One way we do this, for example, is by using Ascension's evidence-based standards like fully care to prevent caudies. Affordable care. An example of this is by having a health care delivery process that is more efficient with our time and resources. Exceptional experience for those we serve. One way we do this is by using the feedback module within Ascension's system-wide event reporting system, which we call ERS, to help engage with patients and their families to resolve any concerns that they have. Exceptional experience for providers. One way we do this is by using associate recognition to share opportunities for creating a more positive associate um, and provider experience. A near miss is important to recognize and report in our high reliability efforts. A near miss is defined as an unplanned incident, circumstance, situation, or event that did not result in harm but had the potential to do so. Either chance or a timely intervention prevented the potential harm. In 2016, near misses made up what percentage of all patient safety events across Ascension? A, greater than 25%, B, between 15 and 25%, or C, less than 15%. The correct answer is between 15 to 25%. Here are some examples. A clinical example would be a staff nurse who is preparing to administer a patient 40 units of regular insulin. 
When she verified the order with her teammate, she discovered that the order is actually for 14 units. She adjusted the dose and administered the correct amount to the patient, avoiding a medical error. A non-clinical example would be a registration clerk who is admitting a patient for a stereotactic breast biopsy. The physician order brought by the patient does not identify which breast is to be biopsied. The clerk stops the process and calls the patient's surgeon to verify the correct side and procedure. The five principles create a culture of high reliability in two ways. One, by anticipating possible events before they occur, and two, by containing events that do occur. The five principles are the principle of anticipation includes preoccupation with failure, sensitivity to operations, and reluctance to simplify. Principles of containment include deference to expertise, commitment to resilience. These principles are not the easiest to understand at face value. Let's look at some examples on the next few slides. Preoccupation with failure in involves associates being alert to what's going wrong, remaining alert to small, minor errors as a symptom that something's wrong, viewing near misses as opportunities to improve current systems, performing debriefing exercises before, before new processes or post events. Debriefing can, can occur during team huddles after a patient's event or safety event. This provides an opportunity to evaluate the process, outcome, and opportunities to revise or share successes. Practicing sensitivity to operations means to be attuned to work being done, be mindful of the complexity of systems in which we work, we quick, work quickly to identify problems in the system to eliminate potential errors and address actual errors. Think of a time when you were required to increase work production with less resources and staff. How did this make you feel? Were you frustrated or successful in achieving your goals? Having open discussions with team members and leaders can help identify priorities while maintaining safety. A third principle is reluctance to simplify. Um, avoid oversimplification. Accepting that the work is complex doesn't doesn't accept simplistic solutions. Understand not every problem can be anticipated in a complex system. What do you think of when you look at this picture? Oversimplifying or taking shortcuts creates more work or increased risks of error. The fourth principle is deference to expertise. Defer to the experts doing the work. Remember that seniority does not always mean competency. We also need you we also need you to speak up to people about safety issues. What resources and tools do you associate with when I'm sorry. What resources and tools do you apply when you face a new task or process you are not familiar with? Do you review policies, standards of operations, standard of care, ask leaders in your departments, or consult with experts in the subject matter? A fifth principle is commitment to resilience. We contain and bounce back from errors by understanding systems how systems can function and continue to function, exploring how to contain errors and improvising as needed without risking safety. Preoccupation with failure, sensitivity to operations, not oversimplifying and asking the, ex the expert builds a foundation for resilience during unexpected events. This picture shows that even in the most difficult of environments, we can overcome obstacles. Which was the most frequent associate safety event in 2016 across Ascension? A, needle sticks, sharps injuries. B, patient handling immobility. Or C, employees 
fall related? The correct answer is needle sticks, sharps, and injuries. There are many actions that support high reliability in very specific and direct ways. Some examples are hand washing, wearing a mask, asking for two patient identifiers such as name and date of birth at every patient encounter, so using platforms to share opportunities for creating a more positive associate and provider experience, using the feedback module with Ascension system-wide event reporting system to help engage in engage with people and their families to resolve any concerns that they have, using Ascension's evidence-based standards such as policies and Nursing Reference Center Plus. We need a just culture that supports speaking up to modify the conditions that contribute to errors. According to a study, only 31% of nurses will speak up when they see a colleague taking a shortcut. To increase that percentage in a just culture, leadership should encourage a code of conduct, of conduct with zero tolerance of intimidating and disruptive behaviors, support rapid, blame-free reporting of all medical errors, provide a standardized and transparent process for every event to promote accountability. This approach leads to creating self-awareness and improves the safety and and quality for all patients and associates. Ascension has deployed a system-wide event reporting system, ERS, assess accessible across all of Ascension. The ERS enables all associates and care providers to report in a standardized manner. All safety events for patients and associates, including near misses and events of harm, and patient and personal and person feedback. These activities encourage the development of a just culture and helps us on our high reliability journey to zero harm. Daily huddles focus the teams on priorities related to safety, quality, and person and family engagement. This also is a time for focus, reflection, and recognition. Department huddles are facilitated by the department leader, manager, or associate. The goal is to understand what is happening at the front line and recognize the importance of the work. Review metrics on the data management board and reinforce performance expectations. Identify problems, impact operations, and ensure continuous improvement is embedded. Recognize and reinforce our commitment to safety and quality. Daily huddles and rounding lead to lower infection rates, fewer complications, and decreased mortality. What could happen if we do not live these high reliability behaviors? Not speaking up and not living a just culture may lead to an intimidating work environment that may lead to harmful events, communication gaps that can lead to inadequate care being provided, Compliancy, which can contribute to gaps in safety, quality, and the experience of those we serve and their families. We end up with more safety events, including near misses and harm. We often know the solution, but what gets in the way is that we do not believe we could ever make that mistake. We have techniques to prevent errors that we use on a daily basis. A sample of these include read back and repeat orders for clear understanding, communicate through the SBAR technique, identifying the situation, the background or the history, what you have assessed, and recommendations to resolve the current concern. Star or stop, think, act, and, re and review is a method to apply to questions to evaluate a decision or action. Stop and resolve simply means just that. Whenever there is an uncertainty or a concern, everything stops until there is a resolution among the team. Sometimes this may progress to the use of the ARC, which stands for ask the question, request a change, voice a concern, and use the change of command. Sometimes it may simply be resolving the issue and moving forward. Depending on the complexity of the issue, 
but the premise and the importance piece is to stop. Trust but verify. It is a technique used to, as part of 200% accountability. It exemplifies paying attention to details and peer checking. The premise is that we trust our coworkers. We trust the information that we received in handoff. We trust the information in the EMR. However, in order to truly prevent errors from occurring, we must verify this information. The verification piece allows us to identify any gaps or discrepancies prior to any error reaching the patient. It is time for you to live the high reliability principles. I'm going to ask you five questions. Will you commit to being 100% accountable for yourself and 100% accountable for your teammates? Will you fully engage and actively participate in your daily huddles? Will you commit to using reback and repeat to ensure you understand the full situation? Will you commit to speaking up? Will you use SBARs to help experts make decisions? Will you be open to feedback from peers or leaders? Will you take past experiences and learn and learning into account before you act? We started this presentation with some sobering realities about medical related deaths throughout the US. In the last hour alone, 50 people died. Our goal with this training and the rest of our time together is that you will apply the behaviors and techniques of high reliability to help prevent this from happening. Please don't ever doubt the impact and importance that you play on carrying out the high reliability principles. I want to read you this small passage. This is called the star thrower. While wandering a desert beach at dusk, stagnant in my work, I saw a man in the distance bending and throwing as he walked the endless stretch towards me. As he came near, I could see that he was throwing starfish, abandoned on the sand by the tide back into the sea. When he was close enough, I asked him why he was working so hard at this strange task. He said that the sun would, would dry the starfish and they would die. I said to him that I thought he was foolish. There were thousands of starfish on miles and miles of beach. One man alone could never make a difference. He smiled as he picked up the next starfish, hurled it far into the sea. He said, I made a huge difference in that one. I abandoned my writing and spent the rest of the morning throwing starfish. High reliability is your choice. Let's be committed to the journey of zero harm. Thank you for your time. Remember that every person you interact with, you have a chance to make a difference.